Welcome to the week two interactive lecture supplement. Pre-writing techniques. The writing process. So what is the writing process? So in the writing process, there are several steps. You have the pre-writing stage. So in the pre-writing stage, you write the outline of your paper. You decide, what am I going to write about? What will be my thesis statement? What's going to be my topic? Then in the draft, second stage is the writing stage. So first you get the pre-writing stage where you decide on the topic. Then you'd write the writing stage, which is where you write your rough draft, and you convert your outline into a five-paragraph essay. Revising. After you write your rough draft, you have your five paragraph essay. Then you're going to first check for essay structure to make sure you have a thesis statement at the end of your introduction paragraph. You make sure that you have topic sentences that all reflect back to your thesis statement. And you make sure you have five paragraphs. And after you make sure that your essay structure is good, then that's known as revision. Then after that, you do proofreading where you check on grammar errors. And so then after you know that your uh, draft is perfect, then you hand in to your final, final draft, which will count essay one, the final draft in week six, will count as your midterm. And your second essay in week 12, that's going to count, final draft is going to count as your final exam. So we're going to be using the writing process in this class. So first step is pre-writing, in which you decide what it is uh, you want to write about. Pre-write. In pre-writing, choose your topic and then write down everything you know about the topic. While no formal research is needed for this step, you may want to begin with some background reading. Based on your reading assignment, follow one of these methods free writing. Free writing is when you just write down whatever comes to your head and you write it in a, in, in a, in a paragraph. Clustering, graphs, and brainstorming means that you create a circle, a central circle. It's known as mapping, clustering. There's so many ways of saying it. Brainstorming. And in the central circle, you place the main idea. And then in the outer circles, you place the uh, body paragraph topic sentences that's going to justify the main idea. And so here, and then listing. Listing is where you just write a list of everything you know about the topic. And after you do free writing, clustering, or brainstorming, then you can write an outline in which you write the um, thesis statement, which is what, what will be your thesis statement. And your thesis statement is always the central idea of your essay. So what is going to be that central idea? That's what you decide in the pre-writing stage. You're pretty much deciding, what am I going to write about? How am I going to express this? How is this going to sound? So let's see how the writing process compares to how Tom prepares for an interview. Click the button below to learn more about Tom's preparation. OK, we'll, we'll get to that in a second. So after you do pre-writing, okay, and you've decided, you've written your outline, you've got your thesis statement, now you want to convert that outline into five paragraph uh, essay. When you write your draft, you begin the process of organizing information and writing paragraphs. A critical part of drafting is developing your thesis statement. The thesis statement is the one sentence in the introduction that expresses your overall main point for the entire essay. Think of it as an umbrella under which all of your supporting details will fall. So the second stage to the writing process is writing the rough draft. After you write your rough draft, you're going to want to correct the rough draft to make sure you have good essay structure and no grammar mistakes. So the third stage in the writing process is known as rewriting. Rewriting has two steps. The first part of the 
re revising uh, the first part of the rewriting stage is revision. Revision is when you check for your essay structure. So revision is when you address the global organization of your essay by answering the following questions. Is your thesis strong enough to support your entire essay now that you have written out all of the body paragraphs? Is the order of information effective? For example, should your second body paragraph be moved down and the third body paragraph be moved up? Focus on the effectiveness of your presentation of details. You also want to make sure at this stage that each topic sentence match the topic sentence is the first sentence of each body paragraph. So you want to make sure that each topic sentence of each body paragraph matches the thesis in order to have essay coherence. And then after you check for essay, your essay structure, then you are going to check for, make sure your grammar is uh, correct and you check for punctuation. So that's revising. And then after you make sure your essay is in good order, good essay structure, and you have no grammar mistakes, then you can hand in to your final draft. Now in the revision stage, you can have someone else look at your paper. And you can also take a break from your paper. Don't just do it all in one sitting because then you get too involved. After you are satisfied that your paper is good, then in week six, you're going to hand in your final draft. So in the final step, you proofread and edit your writing to produce a final polished uh, essay. This is when you read through your essay, checking for spelling, grammar, and punctuation mistakes. At this point, you should also focus on sentence clarity and correctness. Once this step is completed, you should have a well-organized, well-developed, and polished paper to present. So now I've gone through all the different stages of the writing process. The pre-writing, in which you create the outline, the writing process, the writing stage, where you write your rough draft, the rewriting stage, in which you do your revision and you correct for essay structure, and then the final draft, which is your proofreading, where you check for grammar mistakes. Once you're done with your writing process, then you are ready to turn in your paper. Now let's see how Tom prepares for an interview, Tom's preparation. If Tom prepared for an interview as if it were the proofreading and editing stage of landing a job, it would look like this. After finishing his yard work, Tom showered and put on a suit and tie and then drove downtown for his interview. He thought about his main goal for wanting the job and also matched up his best skills to the job requirements listing them out logically in his head. During the interview, the hiring manager was impressed that Tom had done his research because he also knew a lot about the company. Result, Tom would get the job. So if you do the proofreading and editing stage for in your job interview, and you're very careful in researching the company, having good grammar and good essay structure, and good presentation skills, you get the job. And that is how uh, knowing the writing process can help you in the real world. And so here they want you to put this together. I'm not going to do this here. I'll let you do that at home. As you begin proofread, pre-writing, keep in mind the attributes of effective writing. These techniques help you to consider your writing on many different levels to create a full and complete impression on your reader. The different attrib attributes that you consider are the audience, diction, purpose, and genre. Who is my audience, Kim wonders. Select your answer by clicking the bottom 
uh, by clicking the um, bu button below. So is this, is Kim's idea a good idea? Yes. My puppy was about how, my essay was about how a puppy got stuck in a fence and how this junkyard kitten saved him. I thought everyone would like it, but my grandmother said it was a bit juvenile, while my six-year-old loved it. I actually wanted to present this essay to instructor Mary, but since she is going to read it, I should probably reconsider who my audience truly is and then rewrite the essay. If my audience needs to be, defi def needs to be defined as a defined group of people, so when you think about an audience, you have to think about how old is your audience, what gender is your audience, what is the social class of your audience, if I think about how my topic relates to certain groups of people when I write, then my writing will be aimed at a focused group, therefore will be more effective. Good tip. Diction. Another tip for Kim is to consider diction as she begins her pre-writing. Diction is simply a writer's word choice and the tone created when writing. Diction is, ver is a very important factor in relation to your audience. How you approach the more technical or complex concepts in your essay greatly depends on knowing who your audience is. Click on the right button. So basically, diction means that when you write, you have to consider who will be your audience. And so if, for, for example, you're going to give an oral presentation to a bunch of beginners, and you use a lot of technical language, your audience will have no idea what you're talking about. And therefore, when you have to rewrite it, so if you know your audience are beginners, you have to define a lot of the technical terms. If you know your audience are a bunch of experts, already very good, well-versed in that topic, you do not have to define every every technical word, because if you define every technical word for a bunch of experts or peers, you will bore your, your, your audience silly. So you have to direct your writing. You have to know a little bit about who your audience is going to be. Are they going to be a bunch of people, ordinary people, who don't know anything about your topic? Or are they going to be colleagues who already know everything about your topic, and then they would just want to cut to the chase as to what's the newest treatment, what's the newest whatever, and then skip all the explanation, you skip all the technical terms, and you just get straight down to this is the newest um, what we're doing, and this is the newest what makes it so exciting that my company is doing. And then if you're going to uh, give the presentation to the general public who don't know anything about what you do, so first you would have to define this is what my company does, uh, this is what that word means. Then you get to, this is the newest thing that we're doing. So diction and audience is very important. You have to know who you're writing to by taking into account age and gender and social class. If my audience knows something about my chosen topic, then it will be okay to include more technical words and jargon and complicated ideas without having to explain what those ideas really mean. So this is if your audience is a bunch of experts, if your audience is a bunch of um, your peers, you can skip the jargon and then you can go straight to cut to the chase. You can include some of the technical jargon, especially if, if it's a ex new experiment that you're doing. And then you have to explain why it's so new. And if you have new jargon nobody's ever heard before, you know, even for experts. Like for teachers, it would be a new teaching technique. Like I would be familiar with um, how to teach uh, grammar by simply memorizing, having everyone memorize rules out of a grammar book, for instance. And so my audience would be a lot of grammar teachers. They already know the difference between a past tense, simple past, and, and, and future tense. I don't have to go through all of that. I just go right to the chase and say, did you know the newest way and the most exciting way to teach grammar 
is to have a student-centered classroom. Okay, so you just go straight to whatever it is is new. And then it, so it depends on how familiar your audience is. If my audience doesn't really know much about my chosen topic, then I will need to explain the technical terms or complicated ideas to help them understand the essay. So if I'm talking to a bunch of teachers, all I have to say is, oh, we got to go student-centered. And that's it. They know exactly what I'm talking about. But if I'm talking to a bunch of public, the general public, what's a student-centered classroom? What were you doing before student-centered? You have to give a little history. Well, traditionally, when people teach grammar, um, they teach, they memorize, they have their students memorize from a grammar book. But now, in student, notice how I have to explain it a little more. I have to give context. I got to give a history because the average person will be like coming in clueless. Okay, so diction is very, very important. Who are you writing to? I'll let you do this at home. And so consider the following tips as you begin your assignment. Review the assignment and note each step. Ask questions if you need clarification. Review the text for more information on pre-writing strategies. Let the ideas flow. A very good tip when it comes to improving writing is to incorporate feedback from your instructor. Kim shows the feedback I gave her. Tim should do the same. So this means that when I give you comments about how to correct your essay, you need to correct that, include and incorporate that, that feedback into your paper and not just simply look at the grade because a lot of students skip looking at teacher feedback and just go, oh, I got a 95. Okay, that's good. I got a good average. Okay, I don't have to worry about this class. Uh-oh, I got a 65. Oh, I better pay attention to this class. And so students, short on time, don't bother to look at the, especially when teachers can spend hours grading, and then when students ignore the feedback, how would you like it if you give feedback to someone and then people ignore it? You wouldn't like that either. So always remember to incorporate feedback from your instructor into your final draft. So here's an example of, uh, I guess I'm um, not allowed back into this, uh, whatchamacallit. So I'm going to have to go back, courses, and this one, interactive modules. Sorry about this, guys. I didn't know I was going to go outside of the, um, when, it, when, it went, when it did that. So we're going to have to go through this all over again. So, oof. I wasn't paying attention. Sorry. And this has to go like this. And then like this. So I want to edit this. So, when you review Kim's pre-writing, you will notice all of these mistakes. And so you need to incorporate all of this feedback into your final draft. Essay development. Before we get into the discussion on thesis support, review the feedback that Smart Thinking had for Kim um, in her introduction. So you can read this on your own because I know that if I click on this, it's going to go outside of this, this uh, like, like what happened before. So you can click on this later and read it on your own. So um, people who lead stressful lives sometimes have more health issues. I suggest that you present an attention grabber statement at the onset of your introduction so you can make your readers want to read your entire essay. So here he's talking about having a good essay hook. Okay, if you have a good hook, then it grabs the reader's attention. That's the first sentence that grabs the reader's attention. It wasn't easy developing my thesis statement and not moving forward to write out the whole essay, 
but I want to make sure I do it right. I've done some digging on my topic, but I'm not sure if what I found is what is called industry standard. How do I make sure it is? I like the way you two are thinking. Now we get into the nitty gritty of your essays and figure out what is authoritative and what is not. It's one thing to make a statement. It's another thing entirely to be able to support that statement authoritatively. There are different approaches you can use to find the right kind of support for your thesis and develop the body of your paragraph. Kim enjoys looking for information to support her thesis. She needs to figure out how to discern the good from the not so good sources. You mean I have to support every claim I make? I can't just say something is true? Correct. Your reader may or may not believe you when you tell them that your medications are more expensive than owning a dog. So you need to support that claim. Kim may find it hard to support all of her claims. What do you think she might have to do if she cannot find the support she needs? Should she bend the truth? Should she refocus her essay? So here you have the end of week two interactive lecture. And I hope that you enjoyed this presentation. And if you have any questions, you can feel free to email me.